30 years ago this week, November 10th, 1995 to be precise, I checked in a scrappy little utility that I'd written to give Windows the process manager that it never had, and you've been pressing control delete ever since. Task Manager turns 30 today, and because I'm the guy who built it, tonight I'm pulling back the covers on the undocumented keystrokes that bypass the Dead Explorer, the single instance Highlander handshake that revives it when your box is on fire, the kernel bug that rang my phone at 3 a.m., and the Easter eggs that I forgot to remove. If you've ever wondered what happens when you click End Process, you're about to see the receipts. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS-DOS and Windows 95 days, and I'm the guy who brought you Task Manager. It officially turns 30 years old today. The birthday is stamped in the code itself, November 10th, 1995, which means Task Manager is now old enough to roll its eyes at kids these days and yet still get carded occasionally by the UAC prompt. The origin story isn't glamorous. It was a late night, in my den type of project born of a very Unixy impulse. I missed having a clean view of what was running on the system, something that I had become accustomed to on Unix through the PS and top commands. Now, Windows NT had the internal architecture, but there was no dashboard, so I wrote one. And of course, if you're already listing all the windows and processes and so on, you're about 80% of the way to a task manager already, so adding the ability to end tasks and processes and services and so on was just a natural outgrowth of what was already there. What happened next could really only have happened in that 1990s Microsoft era when the company still ran on caffeine and bravado. I brought the rough build into work. We were dogfooding our code at the time, which means we were living on daily NT builds, so debugging within a live system was just how we lived. Word of the tool spread around the halls, and Dave Cutler himself tried it, liked it, and he gave me the green light to check it into the product. Now, Dave C. had me put it at the top of the start menu, which really upset the Windows 95 UI team, who didn't want their clean and simple interface cluttered up with a bunch of nerd knobs. Mark Lukowski acted as its champion and helped keep it in the product when some wanted it pulled. And so, given the right official backing, I just changed the headers to read Copyright Microsoft and checked the code into the source tree. There was no contract, no money changed hands. As I'm fond of saying, my hobby was suddenly my day job, and that's actually a nice situation to be in. As I've noted before, it's a bit like you have a hobby at home of building little birdhouses, and one day your boss sees one and then says, Dave, we really like your little birdhouses, and we want to pay you to make them here at work. My birdhouses just happen to be Task Manager. The literal unromantic version is that the moment a side project becomes actual system software, the quality bar teleports from weekend fun to you break it and someone from the build lab will walk through your wall. I came to Microsoft from an Amiga and Unix background, so Task Manager was actually the first complete Windows application that I'd ever written. As such, the code reads a lot like a sample from an old pet's old book, which is what I happen to have propped open on my desk as I wrote the thing. When I'm new to something, I do it carefully and I try to follow all the rules. It's because I don't know enough to take any shortcuts yet, and as a result, the Task Manager code is as close as I could make to a perfect Windows app. There were three overarching priorities that drove the development. The first was dynamic resizing with no flicker. It's a boring task of figuring out who has to clip what in the right order, but the work pays off with a user interface that can be resized on the fly, adapts automatically, and never flickers. And the second goal is to keep it small. To that end, I even got a little extreme, even excluding the C++ compiler runtime as a source of potential bloat. I learned that if you don't have the runtime, there's no one around to initialize your global objects and so forth, so I wind up walking the link tables manually and doing it myself. It's maybe a little hardcore, but it's still a point of pride for me to note that the NT4 Task Manager is 85k total, including graphics and resources, and it still works on Windows 11 today. The third and final priority was robustness. If something that I relied on could in turn hang or block, I refused to allow Task Manager itself to ever become stalled. And so every time Task Manager interacts with another system component, even for something as simple as the run dialog, it spins up a separate thread and does all the work there so that the main window can never get hung. Task Manager had to be ruthlessly accurate and, above all, honest. Early on, I chased a phantom where the total CPU would occasionally read more than 100%. I actually suspected a bug in NT's process accounting, but the kernel team was unsympathetic. I instrumented an assertion that would trip if the sum ever crossed 100%, and then, like a genius, before I was able to take that out, we shipped a beta build with my home phone number in the assert message so the testers could call me at home at 3 a.m. Weeks later, we finally caught it live, and yes, it was a kernel-side accounting bug. Task Manager was actually reporting what it was getting from the kernel. And once the bug was fixed in the kernel and the assert no longer fired, I wound up commenting it out. But I didn't remove it. 
And so I can still trivially find the source code to Task Manager online in source code leaks by reverse searching for my home phone number. And yes, I still have the same home phone number 30 years later. Please don't call. So if there's a single UI design religion behind Task Manager, it's this. Paint crisply, resize freely, measure precisely, and never lie about the data. Flicker-free drawing became a personal mission. Windows had all the right pieces, but nobody had really pushed a control-heavy, fully resizable window to redraw as cleanly as I wanted it to work. So I subclassed controls, taught list views some new manners, and made sure that if one cell changes in a giant grid, exactly one tiny rectangle repaints. And that's how you get instant smooth resizing without Christmas tree light flicker. A lot of you have stumbled across a window class called Dave's Frame Windproc. That's me giving group boxes a new brain and turning on WS Clip siblings so that the controls stop painting on each other's shoes. When they added the network page sometime after I left, I noticed it was done without the same care and attention. It would flicker white when you resize the task manager. Drove me crazy until they finally fixed it. It also had to be small and hard to kill. On grumpy machines with single digit megabytes free, most apps just fail and bail. Task manager quietly boots into a reduced mode so you can still see a process list and tasks and get your life back. If I had to pick just two aspects of Task Manager that make me a little bit proud, the first is that the binary is a total of 85k, as I said, and that's including all resources. And while the comparison isn't entirely fair, Task Manager today is about 4 megabytes, some 50 times larger than the original. And the second is that the original NT4 version, if you can find a binary copy somewhere, still runs and works on Windows 11 today without change. That 85k binary still works, but will only draw a maximum of 8 CPU cores wrapping extras back around, but even that was forward-looking at the time, since NT itself, at the time, only supported 4. Now, resilience also meant planning for the day that Task Manager itself got wedged, even if I thought that could never happen. When logon knows a back door. You hit Control shift escape and it will attempt to revive the existing instance. If that copy doesn't answer a secret handshake within 10 seconds, or whatever the timeout is, when logon automatically spawns a new one. In practice, it's the Highlander rule. There should only be one, but if the lone immortal goes zombie, another takes its place so that you're never totally stranded. There can be only one. I get asked for secret task manager tricks a lot, so for the birthday party, let's unwrap some of the good stuff. Control Shift Escape is the canonical launcher. It doesn't need Explorer to be alive, so even with the taskbar missing, you can get back to the cockpit. And if the shell is truly toast, hold down control while you click new task and you'll get a raw CMD with administrative privilege. No shell 32 DLL required. If task manager ever misbehaves in a way that feels weird, close it and then immediately relaunch it while holding down control alt and shift. That resets every task manager setting to factory fresh before the main window even comes up. You have to be pretty fast on a modern computer to catch it, but it works. Double clicking any dead gray area in the window will also toggle title barless mode, which is actually a throwback to the way the old NT clock worked, and it allows you to make a tiny little CPU widget for the desktop. Unfortunately, it confused way more people than it ever helped, but I left it in for the connoisseurs. Once you're cruising, right click any process and choose open file location to jump straight to the binary that's actually running. Really handy when your machine insists that some mysterious updater is up to something or has something locked. And if a stubborn process belongs to another user session, Task Manager will politely acquire SE debug privilege and end it in the same way that your debugger would. The OS would let you do it anyway. Task Manager just does the paperwork on your behalf to make it easy for you. Aesthetically, Task Manager began originally with seven segment LED meters for the CPU and memory displays. I'm basically emulating the vector display of my favorite video game, Tempest. And they were cute, but terrible to localize. Try doing Arabic right to left on a pretend LED, so they didn't survive very long. The modern graphs look a lot better, but the original mandate seems to have survived. Don't waste pixels, give me signal. If you really want signal, add more columns. So many people don't realize that you can customize the process list. You can add handles, threads, GDI objects, reorder columns, and Task Manager will remember your layout the next time you start it. Then there's the naming archaeology. Because the first version grew up in my den, a bunch of superclassed controls went in with Dave prefixes so that I could tell them from the stock ones. Dave's frame window proc, Dave's group class. It wasn't ego, it was a lack of imagination on a long to-do list working at home. By the time we had time to go in and tidy up cosmetic issues like that, we were already in beta lockdown, so you couldn't do trivial changes. So the Davisms escaped into the wild, and for all I know, still remain there today. Philosophically, I wanted it to be a powerful tool. If you had admin rights and wanted to end the shell, that's up to you. You could set something to real-time priority and freeze your box, also okay. 
I believed that the operating system should be the arbiter of what's allowed and that my job was not to second guess it. Of course, a few journalists discovered that you could blue screen a machine in one click if you abused that freedom, so later versions added a few kid gloves. I still miss it as a sharper blade sometimes, but it was the right call for most of the people most of the time. Control Shift Escape will always be my favorite because WinLogon is always listening. It's how you get a lifeline when everything else is wedged or your VM is swallowing Control Delete. But I won't judge if you're a right click taskbar person. Just don't be the Control Alt Delete task manager button. And the point was abundance. 10 doors into the same room so that on your worst day at least one of them opens. But Control Shift Escape is the way the kids are all doing it today. When you put a tool in front of hundreds of millions of people every month, you owe them ruthless determinism. And that scale is the part that still humbles me. Code written after must-see TV that still runs in core windows, launched by a billion people each month. Popularity comes and goes, but staying power is different. I'm humbled and impressed that it's been around as long as it has. There's also a bit of a 64-bit epilogue that I think engineers will appreciate. Because I never smuggled pointers through 32-bit types and always did the internal math with 64-bit counters even back in the 32-bit days, the x64 transition was pretty much ceremonial. Recompile clean, mark 32-bit processes with a tiny asterisks, and enjoy a free lunch from the Win64 calling convention. More arguments being put in registers means less stack thrash, which made the process list even faster. And that's the kind of migration you aspire to. Easy, boring, and faster. If you're new to Task Manager, or if you've only used it as a panic button, here's a short list of birthday present features that you should actually use. First, make the UI yours. Add columns for handles, threads, or GPU, and drag them to where you want, and Task Manager will remember. Second, learn that emergency toolkit. Control Shift Escape to get in. Control Alt Shift at launch to fully reset it. Control on new task for a raw command prompt. Third, treat open file location as your friend when something smells weird. Fourth, remember that if Task Manager can't kill it, you don't have a user mode problem, you've got a kernel problem. The tool will escalate to use debugger style privileges when it can, but if that still fails, it's time for a reboot or a driver hunt. A couple of people have asked, what's the most important line of code in Task Manager? And my answer isn't that it's a line, it's a habit. It's the habit of eating your own dog food and accountability that says if a number is wrong or a window flickers, I take it personally until the fix ships. It's a product of a time and a culture that allowed ownership over time to translate into craftsmanship. It's the habit of assuming that the user is trying to accomplish some real work. Ship a build, make a flight, save a document, and my job is to just fix things and get out of the way. And it's the habit of resilience. If the tool itself gets stuck, revive it. If the system is starving, work in reduced mode. If the user needs a chisel, don't give them a Nerf bat. So happy 30th, Task Manager. From a den in our old Redmond apartment to the right-click menu of the world, you've had quite a run. If tonight your laptop starts to feel a little warm and the fans spin up, you already know what to do. And if you forget, well, there are at least 10 ways to remember. If you found our little birthday tour entertaining or it saved you for maybe a reboot once or twice, consider leaving a like and hitting subscribe. I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so in the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Do it, Glenn! Do it, do it! <laughs>